Here I am at the grave marker of Caleb P. Hatfield or Charles Hatfield, depending on when you were talking to him. This is a Confederate grave marker. What I'm gonna do first is clean the stone and then I'll tell his story. Just remember, anytime you clean the stone, you're gonna hear me say this a bunch, never use bleach. It destroys the integrity of the surface of stone, causes it to erode quicker. Now I'm gonna get busy cleaning. These are the materials I'll be using to clean this tombstone. The Orvist, that's a paste soap, it's real mild. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary or not, but I just put it on there for a little kick, and then the wet and forget it. I use that. Do not, never, ever use bleach. Uh, you can also use Biocide Cleaner uh, D2. I've not used it yet. I intend to order some later, though. The, the stick and the brush there is to get down in the letters. Never use metal. No steel brushes. No steel scrapers, never use metal. And of course, that's that's my little sprayer right there. So basically how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna rinse, I have two buckets. I'm gonna rinse with one bucket, clean and scrub with another bucket, and rinse with the first bucket. You'll see. It just rained here a few minutes ago and it, it's still sprinkling a little bit. Stone's already wet. I've pre-soaked it and uh, I'm not gonna let it sit long pre-soaking. I normally like to give it 10 or 15 minutes, but it's already soaked in the rain. So I'm gonna tell a little bit of a story. Um, Caleb Hatfield was born in 1847. Um, he was 14 years old when the Civil War started, but he didn't join when the, when the Civil War started. He got in on the last year or two. I'm, I'm thinking he joined, he was about 17 or 18, because he was 18 when it ended. He was in the uh, Company G of the 20th South Carolina Infantry. Now just quickly looking over their battles, they seem to have been mo mostly in South Carolina. And I think one of their last battles was uh, up in Virginia. Um, so I don't know what battles he was in, what, what battles he was not in. Now it's time to scrub and rinse. Okay, so there is a marked improvement. It's not as good as I would like for it to be though. Uh, when I spray the wet it and forget on it, and just walk away, uh, let nature do its thing, sunshine, water, wind, rain, rinse it off. They, they say in about three months, it'll look perfect, maybe even before then. Now what I have to do is wait for that to dry to spray the wet and forget on it, because it's supposed to be dry. So if it's not dry by the end of the story, which I doubt it will be, I'll just come back later today or maybe tomorrow and spray that on there. Meanwhile, let's talk about Mr. Hatfield. He enlisted, kind of out of breath from all the scrubbing. Uh, he enlisted in 1864 in March. It was about a year later the Civil War ended, so he caught the last year of it. I don't know if he had any injuries or, or, or anything like that. Uh, I couldn't find records of that. Sometimes you can come upon those records and other times you can search and search and search and not find nothing. Uh, so a question I would ask myself is, given how many amputees there were in the Civil War, uh, I wonder if he did get injured, was he an amputee? I really have no way of knowing uh, since I've looked. There is a way of knowing. I just got to put my hands on the right record. I haven't been able to find it. Hooey. Anyway, so Mr. Caleb Hatfield had two wives. His first one's name was Jane. She died early on. I don't know when. The second one was Alice. Now, Alice was quite a bit younger than him. She was born in 1865. So she had, uh, or he had quite a few years difference. Uh, I think he was 34 when they got married. So um, he was about twice her age. And he had no children from his first marriage. And on this marriage, he, they adopted a child. Um, that child was born in 1891. Um, her name was uh, Annie Cornelia. And um, she ended up marrying a family that I know of. She, she married a guy named James Capel. Now, I know the Capel family in this area, and it ties back to her people, too. Um, I did a little research, found out she's not directly related, like straight up the line, more like she married a, like a great-great-uncle or something. 
Now, this guy struggled to make a living just like most people did back then. Depending on when you looked him up, he was either a carpenter, a farmer, in shoe repair, or a harness maker. And I seem to have run across a record that said he moved out west and, and did home, you know, he had a homestead for a short while, but that, that must have fell through. And that's assuming it's the same person, which is a bit of an assumption. Now, he died at the Confed Confederate Veterans Home um, uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, I do believe is where that was at. Now, just because you're a Confederate veteran didn't mean you got to be admitted to the home. You had to be poor. You had to be impoverished. You had to be dirt poor with uh, no family to help you out. Uh, his brother uh, did the paperwork to have him put here. His wife died in 1928. That would be um, the second wife, Alice, in 1928. And it was 1929 when he was brought here. Now, he had a daughter, but apparently she couldn't take care of him. It could have been for several reasons. It might have been she was too poor, too. It could have been that maybe he was senile and hard to get along with. Um, there's just all kinds of speculation. You, you can go into something like that. And, and that's something else I've noticed, too, uh, in these videos I make. If you see a Confederate headstone like that, uh, chances are he was from a poor family because those that had money and that were in the Confederate Army have the regular tombstones, but etched in it, it says Confederate veteran, and it may give the unit and all that too. Um, you know, they may have, a, if they had a lot of money, have elaborate tombstones, their tombstone, with the information that says Confederate Army, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so when you see a stone, it's a straight up military ordered stone, especially from the Civil War, and probably later too, you know you're dealing with a man that didn't have much money. Although he tried and tried. Now, he is buried here. On, on, it's, this is a corner here of this um, cemetery. His family ain't buried here. I thought that might be his wife over there, but it's not. Um, see what I'm talking about here. Right there. I thought that was close enough. That should be his wife, but it's not. Uh, both of his wives were buried in um, Lee County, I believe, which is another county away. Um, um, with family and stuff, and, and he was buried here. Um, I don't know why here instead of them. Again, you know, these things happen and you can speculate, but you really don't know why. 90 years ago, he died 90 years ago in uh, 1931, 1847 to 1931. And, um, you know, I just, I just have to wonder, did anybody come by and visit? I assume his daughter did. Maybe he had grandchildren and they did. I really don't know. Uh, part of the reason why I make these videos, and I cleaned this tombstone in honor of him. I don't know that anybody's even said his name in 40, 50 years. I've said his name, okay? And I've given him honor by cleaning his tombstone. I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, get permission from the undertaker, or not the undertaker, but the guy that runs the cemetery, um, or, the, or the ladies. Uh, <laughs> um, or if you know the family, get permission from them. I do know that tombstones are actually federal property, so you don't necessarily have to get the permission of the family, but if you can, do. In this case, it would have been impossible. And the guy that runs the cemetery said he has thousands of tombstones here, and he would very much appreciate any help he can get, as long as the person knows what he's doing. You'll find that probably you'll run into thankful people that'll be glad you did. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. And when you subscribe, there will be a bell that will show up on the right-hand side of the screen. Hit that and you'll get notified every time I upload a video. Thank you.